Hey Collective and welcome back to Altruistic Channel, it's Al. Today's video is going to be centered around a tough topic that a lot of people struggle with and that is the subject of vulnerability. I was watching an amazingly gifted young woman uh, by the name of Drew Barrymore. She came across my algorithm for some reason on YouTube. Um, I didn't really know that she was doing a show. I've been kind of, you know, on mission and not really paying attention to, the, to what the television was really up about these days. But I saw her in my feed and what I found interesting about the... Um, video that I saw was that she was speaking to someone, I think it was Mayan Bialnik, the girl, the, um, the brilliant neuroscientist that's just, just amazing. And they were talking about something about mental health, which is a really big topic for all people at this turquoise level or this vibration that we're trying to pull together of like leaders that really dive deep into some of the more controversial parts. But what grabbed my attention was actually something that came through her soul. It was a soul to soul connection that I had with her and a moment where she shared how she had been it's struggling with the fact that she had had a really hard morning and that she was on the corner or something what uh, whatnot and she was having an issue with her child and her child just caused like a big temper tantrum and she was sitting there and she's crying and she didn't have anybody to turn to and she kept it to herself and it was just one of those most very humbling moments for her and she shared an honesty that I thought was brilliant and it speaks to what this turquoise leadership should really be about and that's the vulnerability of truth when you hear someone's soul and what it was is that she just said very innocently, I, I might add, that she doesn't have, that she should be grateful for her life and that people don't understand and that they don't allow her. She didn't say it exactly like this, but it's almost like she got the impression that she's not allowed to complain because she's so blessed in her life. And I thought, well, isn't that an incredibly powerful statement from somebody very, very, in, you know, in God's favor? And I thought, of all the ascendants, all the people who really strive uh, to rise above the chaos and, and some of the earlier uh, mess-ups that we all have, mind you, this woman is like a beaming example of what that looks like. And I just remember looking at her and I just was like, that's where the story lies. That's what I want to see. I want to, because it connected me to her on a human scale. It broke through the facade of her fame. It broke through the facade of, of anything else because we as human beings struggle with that so much. We are indoctrinated to believe that we must always be grateful, which is, I shouldn't say indoctrinated, but we are rightfully told that we should always be grateful for everything in the world, right? But the thing that I've always noticed is that part of the struggle that we have in spirituality or any type of leadership at all is the fact that we always feel like we can't say any. There's a, who do we turn to? Who do we turn to when we have these moments where we feel weak? Well, we turn to each other. That is what humanity does. You know, we're not here to be perfect. We're here to learn. And it's an academy. And I thought if I had, if my show, if I got this freaking show up and running, I would spend a, like an hour talking to her about that one topic, about the everyday mundanity things that she runs into where she feels stuff like that. Because I don't know if it's, if it was the fact that I felt empathy for her in that moment and how hard that makes someone's life to feel like you can't ever voice your concern or feel like somehow you're put upon where you can't say anything because it shows that you're in ungrateful. No, it shows that you're human. And I just wanted to reach through the TV and be like, hey girl, I hear you, my soul hears you. Because as somebody who's been doing a lot of my own stuff, um, one of the things I really struggled with and one of the things I think a lot of truly spiritual people struggle with is you, you get put through these tests that are just unbelievably harsh sometimes. And you're always under this pressure to not say anything, to take it, that it's for your best good and that and that you will be better for it and that you will rise above it and that, and that your soul will be stronger for it. But we forget the fact that we're still human and if we don't express ourselves and if we don't feel the physical ramifications of trying to be that brave and that courageous, then we actually get stuck in this place of constant stress. We never breathe. And it reminded me of a topic that I wanted to discuss for the show, which was that stress of how lonely standing with your faith can be. Everybody gets stuck in this faith-based ideology where everyone's house is better than the other house. And that, you know, it's like a fraternity. It's a, honestly, I would equate it to similar to a fraternity or sorority scenario where each house competes with the other house and their house is better and whatnot. I mean, obviously on a, on a much higher scale. But you guys understand what I'm saying. I'm not trying to cast stones here. I'm trying to unite us, but you understand what I'm saying. It's that, 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 we, that we know better than everybody else, even though we're in a school and none of us really know, right? Like a lot of it has to do with blind faith. 
But one of the biggest stresses that we have is that vulnerability. We are always terrified to ask the questions because people will accuse us of whatever their low ego or their small penis is going to throw at you. Because it's easier to sometimes be in that mental space of keep it to yourself, keep it to yourself, keep it to yourself. But how healthy is that for the human experience? How healthy is it to truly feel that because you are blessed in many ways that you're not able to voice your truth? That's not being that's not a faith that I personally can subscribe to. If my faith tells me that I can't share with someone that yes, I am incredibly blessed because I am. Everything I've ever needed is taken care of. I'm very very lucky. But that doesn't mean that if I that doesn't mean that I can live my authentic truth and my soul can be heard if I'm lying and sitting there saying that it's not hard sometimes. You know, like right now, I'm going through this thing where I'm grateful for my house and I'm grateful for the situation and all that. But there's a lot of people here in this house and I don't get sleep and it can stress me out because I'm one of those people that I like peace. I'm trying to bring peace to the world. So I've said before, it's really hard for me when I don't get that. And I keep getting this impression that if I say something and if I don't flatten that button, that 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 annoyance of it when I don't sleep and when I'm not allowed to just have some rest and so forth, that I'm somehow setting myself back. And I realize that's indoctrination. That's not true. God doesn't want us to suffer. God wants us to rejoice in life every day. And I do do that. And I do that with with everything that I've been through. I celebrate life every single day. And I've wondered how many of us within the collective struggle like Ms. Barrymore does with this idea that because we are financially well off, or in my case, very spiritually well off, off and in a really, really great, humble place, that I'm not allowed to or we're not allowed to share the struggle of what it takes to be that faithful. And I wondered if you all would be interested in that topic as far as is there a way to be grateful for your life and allow yourself to be heard all the way through one of the things i've really learned about my spiritual journey in particular and my connection with god um you guys call it allah uh, whatever you believe in i call it god um, or the divine what i've learned with my connection with the divine is that i always feel love in the strangest places it's usually the smallest thing i'll make like a quick a uh, little like joke or something and i will feel a warmth that comes over me out of nowhere it's not like i get to it's just like a like a hug from something and i find that to be really endearing but i've noticed it always comes in times when i'm honest that's one of the things about spiritual leadership is that we can all sit there and say that it's better to not complain or not to say anything and to just take it and it's better but we don't know that to be true because God wants us to grow, but you can't grow unless you're willing to voice your concern. The universe doesn't know how to give you what you can't say. And so if you are sitting there like I used to do for a very long time, actually until very, very recently with this whole living situation and stuff, um, and me trying to get the show up, is I kept letting other people's voices get into my head about keeping it to myself and that I would be setting myself back. And I realized the universe doesn't work that way. The universe doesn't want us to suffer. It wants us to grow. But you can't grow unless you show and share what you're really going through. It's like that, that what was it? Um, I can't remember what movie it was, but there was a cartoon. Uh, it was a cartoon movie. It was brilliant. I think it was Inside. And it was Sadness who says to the, to, to the main character, she says, she needs to cry. If she doesn't cry, we can't help her. She can't receive the help that she gets or that they get. And just, it humbled me in that moment and it made me think of Ms. Barrymore. Uh, it connected the two because I realized it's why we have so much mental health issue is because we seem to have been indoctrinated to believe that we should not complain, that we must take it as it is. But what I realized in this reset is that God wants more for us. The divine, whatever you call it, wants humanity to be freed of the shackles that bind us. And what better way to bind a society than to make them think that they must take uh, handouts or must take scraps? That's not God. That's not humanity. That's not our path. That's not our future. Do you realize that right now, instead of asking questions, we're running in fear? Well, that's fine. I mean, everybody's allowed to do what they want. But there are children that are literally have had an entire year of life that don't know a world without fear. That's not God. That's not a higher calling. That's not a higher anything. That's not source. That's that's enslavement. We have to break beyond the stereotypes. And that's why I like Mayim, who was the person that connected it. Mayim Bialik, because she's doing that show, the podcast. I, don't, I haven't heard it because of, of my limitations here. Um, 
financially, but um, and I'm okay with that. That's actually something interesting. But sidebar, sorry, back to topic. Um, but she's talking about mental health, and she's talking about it from what I can hear in a way that's very, very relatable, and to the point that Drew actually quoted her very eloquently. That's power. We're finally getting beyond the stigma. And one of the biggest stigmas I find is with, in particular with women, because we have, or not we, but the society has indoctrinated women to believe that they are secondary citizens. It's what I take major issue with in religion, but I'm not talking about that here. But it almost makes everybody question if they must be always demure. If you are like a Shannon Doherty, who's a powerhouse in, in her own power, then she's a bitch. And I always thought that was so disrespectful. She's not a bitch. She's just a boss. There's a difference between the two. But we've been indoctrinated to believe that to stand up for yourself as a woman or as a gay man, that you are the negative connotation of it. And so we take on the other opposing negative characteristics of the opposite gender and uh, a lot of toxic femininity. Then they take on the toxic masculinity and they become their own worst enemy, right? But it spirals. But one of the greatest boundaries, or not boundaries, one of the biggest blocks we have to uniting our planet is that we have attached stigma to depression. Because it indoctrinates you to believe that you must take the pain. That life is meant to hurt. And I find that to be absolute bullshit, don't you? Why would God ever make a school like this that is for enslavement? Why would God ever want you to lose your voice? Why would God ever want you to lose your rights? That's not learning. That's slavery. And as we struggle with all this stuff, I just thought in that one moment of connecting to another human being like Ms. Barrymore and that truth, I just thought that the world opened up to me. And that's what the show's about, the one that I'm thinking about. I would love to pick her brain and maybe um, Mayan, uh, Mayan Blanc and sit down with them and a couple of other mothers and actually let them hear what it sounds like sometimes to hear women from somebody who really loves women. Like, I'm all about feminine uh, power. And I would love to just tell them, you know, like share with them some of the things that I hear sometimes when people speak. Because it says a lot more, Miss Barrymore, you are truly blessed and you have God's favor. You are allowed to feel your days and you're allowed to seek people who understand that. I know that you're indoctrinated to believe that for you to say anything is ungrateful. But you are human and you're here to enjoy life. The universe can't help us. God can't help us. If we don't share those moments, isn't that what Inside Out taught us? Is the fact that if you want the help that you need, you must voice the concern. You must voice it. If you don't, then you carry that burden and you never let it go. I don't like that. This world, man, look, we have some amazing blessings in here, but it can get better. It will get better. But we need a leadership that really, really is willing to talk about this stuff. With the stigma to the that Mayan was talking about, um, I don't know them personally, but what I remember thinking about was the fact that, do you remember how they used to say that if you've ever uh, thought about suicide, that you are that you are a depressed person? Blah, blah. I'm like, or your wife cheated on you with your best friend and your kids died. Like, that would lead anybody to depression. But we're not even allowed to be depressed one singular time without having a stigma to us. If we need medication for any point in, in our lives, immediately we get tagged as a manic depressive or whatever it is. Why? Because it makes us pharmaceutically driven. It makes us pharmaceutically addicted. It gives them the opportunity to make us take drugs instead of actually reaching out to people. It's so forbidden for the most powerful uh, gender on our planet to really rise to their power when you keep drugging them and you keep making them fight with each other. I've, one of the biggest struggles I had when I was lower vibrational was the fact that I used to look at women and get really frustrated with the whole topic of the inner ba battle that goes back and forth between women who go to work and women who stay home with the kids and how they try to one-up each other. And I just remember thinking, that's not a feminine quality. That must be some small dick jackass who made a comment and started that ball rolling. Someone who has made their wife secondary or made and treats them like meat. That's where that came from. Because no real man, not a big boner motherfucker, is ever going to say to society, Oh, no, you need to be secondary to me. No. That's not a man. That's a boy. And now there's a bunch of men who live on the planet who want to, to be there. 
but we don't even hear it anymore. We get stuck listening to this monologue between the same gender. It doesn't matter if you stay at home and raise your children or you go to work. You are both supposed to be working together. You want equality, right? Isn't that what all women want? It's really frustrating sometimes as a gay man to sit here and not get involved with it without coming up like some chauvinistic asshole. But the truth is you must unite. It doesn't matter if you do either one. Some women don't have the opportunity. Some of them were left by the same assholes who were making you fight. So instead of being all vindictive and bitchy about it and letting the man control you that way and make you enslaved, why not support her and say, hey, I totally get it. I'm lucky I get to stay home and raise my kids instead of like being all bitchy about the fact that she doesn't. That would unite the planet right there. How about rejoicing in the fact that they decided to go to work even if they have the option? That's someone who has a very good ego. Instead of making her feel bad about it, why not support her endeavor? Why not let the husband stay home? We're trying to raise an entire new generation that is better than we are. We know better. We'll do better. But we can't do that if we're stuck in the same old mindset. Guys, a house divided shall fall. That's why they've kept women fighting for so long in her, in her battle. is because they know that once you guys unite, there's nothing you can't do. You have the entire gay population backing you. That's an entire extra set of people. So if you make up 50% of the world, let's do the numbers here, and you have the gay population, which supposedly is only 10%, which we all know it's about 20%. That's 70% of the population. You could change the world right now. You really could. You could change it right now. If you get out of the indoctrination, out of this enslaved mindset that you can't complain and you can't share your feelings with people. Miss Barrymore, next time that you feel like that, call me. I will uh, literally... You're in LA, I think. I will come to the fucking studio and I will stand six feet apart from you and I'm going to tell you that you have every right for your feelings. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If anyone on this planet is going to break through the barrier, it's you. With what you've done with your life, with what you've done with your name, and who you are and who you've become. If you want to share with the world that vulnerability and connect to someone like me that does, has no connection to you whatsoever, share it. That's a story. That's what an entire hour should be. It's about that struggle. It doesn't matter. I'm not telling you what to do because you got your own show and I like it. Um, but what I'm saying is like for on my show, like the, what I'm looking at is the truth. I always go, if I'm going to do a story, I need to dig deeper. It's not going to be the superfluous that anybody can get to. It's something that I can see through because of my connection to a higher source. That's who wants to be heard. And so I'm always going to dig deeper. And that was the story for me. That episode was just very powerful. It was such an innocent aside. It was such a vulnerable place that it made me realize why we need this new leadership, why we need a program like this, why we need brains like mine or brains like hers or brains like uh, Anderson Cooper's or Tyler Perry's or Oprah Winfrey's or or the guy who runs Tesla or, or, or all of these brilliant minds. It doesn't even have to be at that level. We need that vulnerability because what we're lacking is trust. No one trusts anybody right now. Everybody's so motivated by greed and by money that no one's willing to do what's right for humanity. Because you can tell when you don't even allow the human citizen to express themselves without putting them under stigma, without putting them under medication, without making them afraid of each other, without making them internally fight with one another. Women, this thing that they're doing with the vaccination against your will is a way a backdoor entrance in order to take away Roe v. Wade, FYI, in case you're not awake yet. You see, Roe v. Wade controls your right to choose what your body, like what happens to your body. And by you allowing, or all of us allowing them to take away our rights by making it mandatory to inject it, then guess what happens to Roe v. Wade? This is a very, very clear example of manipulation. But I can't do this by myself. We as a society really need to band together, and I'm willing to bet it's going to be the moms out there who want better for their children. God forbid that I'm right about this having consequences down the road for fertility, but what if it does? Is that a gamble that we as a society should be taking? That is the, the end result here. We need a leadership that does what I'm asking us to do which is show up and be vulnerable. Ask the tough questions and be willing to hear the answers even if you don't like it. That is what altruism is. That is what we are about as a society. 
This is our only course of action. We can hide from fear and we can hide in divisive tactics, but if we don't unite, our kids won't make it because we won't. Ask the questions. Endorse something that means something. If you are famous, what are you famous for now? What is your legacy? That's it for me, guys, on Altruistic Channels. You guys have a great day.